hello and welcome to the show. For today's 4 to 7 challenge, we were going to compete in a couple of relay races. This time around, the well, our teams, each team is made up of four cars, and the restrictions were you had two and a half thousand PI to spend across your four vehicles. That means you go for a very middle of the road strategy, have everything equal in terms of PI, equally fast, or you could go for a couple of cars higher PI, a couple of cars though would then have to be lower. It's a very sort of strategic way of building your cars. There are going to be compromises made somewhere. It's how you go about it. Now, there were a couple of other additional rules uh, put into this. We were not allowing cars above S-Class. The reason being, if you do, every team's going to run a Formula 1 car because X-Class can kind of go almost unlimited for 999 PI. And the Formula 1 cars, we did it a while ago, Formula 1 cars are basically horrendously OP for that. So everyone would have a Formula 1 car. And we were doing this one in a sort of little nations tournament. Each team uh, was using a specific nation. Our orange team, for example, was running Italy. Different countries would have different advantages and, you know, some just wouldn't really work. So we stuck it with the maximum of S-Class and no race cars. Over the past few challenges, this has been the fairest and most interesting way of structuring a relay race because you've got not only the tactical decisions the building of the cars but you've also got to be careful of the order you run them in because running in clean air is so very very important you might have s-class cars running against b-class a-class cars and if they get stuck behind them it's only for a couple of corners it can cost a huge amount of time to a very fast vehicle so there's a lot of strategic elements that, uh, that go into this sort of race. Also, you're running cars in the same class order. You're going to have a big old battle from within that class. Uh, speaking of that, our first race, we go to Indianapolis, and nobody ran cars from the same class for the first stint. Our orange team, we are actually running an interesting strategy. We were the only ones to have cars not built to the top of their respective classes. We had a top S-class car, we had a mid S-class car, had a top C-class and a mid C-class. And we were the only team to do that. White team, uh, they were sending out their A-class Subaru. Uh, them representing Japan, they had two A-class cars, a B-class car and a C-class car. The green team that we were following here, representing Great Britain, they had an S-class, two Bs and a C-class. While Pink had chosen to send out their C-class car first, uh, they had an S, two Cs and an A. So similar to our orange team strategy, but yeah, we were the only ones that had gone for this, uh, for this sort of split PI strategy this time around. But yeah, everyone on a slightly different route. And the Aerial Nomad was doing very well. Our bath actually went for a little bit of an off, I think, <laughs> in the braking zone. The Nomad, the B-Class Nomad, was uh, giving the Impreza some troubles. And that is, of course, a big issue for White Team. Their car that they expected to be quick, or certainly expected to be quicker, expected to keep them in a bit of clean air, has been stuck fighting with a Nomad. That's costing the Subaru a lot more time than it's costing the Nomad. Thankfully for us, for our orange team, the Abarth got to the front and was able to stay. Again, little, maybe a, a little outbreaky manoeuvre, but he was at the front of the field and not really in traffic, not really in trouble. Although, of course, was going to be handing over to the slower cars. We tried to pull the gap early on and then, you know, use some of the slower cars. My Alpha GTV would set off next. Green Team would hand over after a pretty handy stint from the Nomad ahead of the White Team. They would be sending out their second A-Class car. White Team going for their two fastest cars early on. Now, that strategy can work. However, to make it work, you've really got to be able to build up a pretty decent let's say a pretty decent sized lead because you're going to be having slower cars towards the end of the race and they need a big lead before they're getting hunted down by S-Class cars. My goal, well, having two faster cars chasing me down, you know, it's never likely that I was going to be able to keep hold of the lead for the entire lap because we didn't have such a massive margin to be able to do that. Hell, we've got a C-Class car up against an A-Class car, but the goal for me was to keep us in the running, to keep us as close as possible, because when it got to the final stint, we were going to have a very quick car again. <laughs> sure enough, 
I could make life difficult for these vehicles. Inevitably, the 300ZX, well, being an A-Class car, was just so much faster than my GTV, although I could still shove the nose up the inside a little bit through the corners. The Jag was monumentally fast down the straights, but a handful through the corners, so I was able to keep it behind, and the longer I kept it behind. Now, this was hurting Green Team, and not really hurting hurting me. I was only taking sort of slightly defensive lines, because the, the Jag just simply couldn't turn. A pink team were burning their A-Class car. As that we get into the battle, and we're now three wide. I managed to keep ahead of the Jag. The BMW gets blocked in with nowhere to go. I actually get a little bit of a nudge. Slightly sideways from the GTV. We are all sideways, three, three wide coming onto the straight. They do eventually get past. Remember, that was just a C-Class car by me that managed to, well, fend off these other vehicles would hand over onto the next in white team would, co would well, continue with the lead they'd hand over to a b-class car the rest of the teams green pink and us with orange were all in c-class admittedly ours was halfway through c-class but we were all in c-class the land rover very stupidly fast down the straight had very little in the way of breaking incredibly deep into the first corner that would help us that's promoted our hc up a position as we <laughs> try to chase down the uh, pink team's golf and the alpha despite being only a mid c class you know with 50 pi down on that uh, on that volkswagen <laughs> the alpha could give it some grief the alpha could give it some grief at the front the uh, white team uh, continues to lead but they were going to have a slow car to finish they needed a very very big margin uh, the <laughs> 8c was well, not the easiest of cars to, to drive, despite having got to the front. Uh, a big, big two-wheeled moment from the 8C almost cost it. It was a little bit of rallycross from the uh, classic race car, but uh, did get away with it as it came to the changeover. White would hand over with that lead, but that's a C-class car going up against three S-class cars. All of them full PI S-class cars, and importantly for Orange Team, we would hand over with the lead theoretically all equal cars. The Land Rover, I think we'll have another braking issue in another corner, so there was a lot of work going to be needed for Green Team. The question was, could the Skyline, or was the Skyline far enough away? Could the Skyline keep ahead? It was looking dicey. The White Team, you know, as, as we sort of saw them across the line, White Team would have wanted a considerably healthier margin ahead of two S-Class cars. Could the Ferrari keep that Mercedes behind? As I said, Green Team had a good first couple of stints, but Land Rover having trouble get slowing slowing down for some of the tougher corners uh, meant the 211 had a lot of work to do. The 211 had an awful lot of work to do. It is a very, very quick car. It's perhaps not even the best of tracks, really, for the 211 either. So, yeah, that was going to be an uphill battle for the Lotus. The uh, Skyline? Well... That would lead the early parts, but as we came up towards the uh, twistier sections, that's not a sight you wanted to see behind at this stage of the race. The Ferrari did so much more speed, so much more grip in the F12 there. You know, S-Class versus C-Class cars, it's always going to be the case. The Skyline can't really even try and fend them off. You know, if you've got one class difference, you can maybe slow somebody down, but in this for a couple of quarters. This, you're not going to be able to slow them down for any length of time. There's just so much more grip in the S-Class cars. That would put Orange Team up into the lead. Pink was chasing, though, as we head in towards this final section. No difference, or technical difference, in car performance between the pair of these. Mercedes a little quicker through those final couple of corners, but it isn't close enough to do anything about the Ferrari as they head down the start-finish straight. Orange Team would take victory in the first race ahead of Pink Team's Mercedes. The battle for third place, well, the Lotus had done their very, very best to try and catch up. The Skyline would side onto the banking and just able to hold on the drag race towards the line the skyline you know wasn't too bad in terms of straight line speed considering it's a c-class car but uh, the skyline would hold on to third our second race and we would head to the bugatti circuit again differing strategies for the cars off of the look. You can see the speed the Land Rover has. That is a C-Class car, and the accelerator, yeah, it's all-wheel drive, but it is in the wet, but that is a C-Class car. That is monstrously fast. We're riding on board with white team sending out their A-Class car. Again, the first race, our strategy of send a quick car out early on, try and get us in clean air so we don't have to fight with any of the other vehicles. Uh, we were trying it again, this time sending the Ferrari around first. White team were again using their quick cars as well, although the Subaru 
little bit more trouble. Does get around the Land Rover without really losing too much time. And that's the important thing with some of these is that you don't want to get stuck up behind a car for a couple of corners. Hell, I, th I think perhaps me holding, or I say holding, but slowing down the BMW at Indianapolis for a couple of corners. That, that little bit of time difference could be the difference between, you know, winning and, and losing the race in some of these instances. So, yeah, running in clean air with any vehicle, whatever class it is, but definitely you want to be running in that clean air, which is why we were sending the Ferrari out. The downside, of course, you burn your fast cars early on is that at the end of the race, you've got to be a little bit careful because you'll be easy to overtake. That's why we were still saving an S-Class car for that final stint. While White Team's A-Class car will get to that clear air and run around on its own, third place battle, well, that was between two C-Class cars, two very different C-Class cars. The Land Rover stupidly fast down the straights. However, not very nice through the corners whatsoever. The Golf, the far better of the two around the turns. The Volkswagen making up a position and then immediately losing it once he got to the straight. Remember, these two are the same class. <laughs> That's really very much power versus handling here. This doesn't help either of them particularly because you're stuck in battle. If anything, it hinders the Volkswagen a little bit more than the Land Rover because the Volkswagen can't really slow the Land Rover down when it comes to the straights, whereas the Land Rover can very much park on a normal racing line and make life difficult for the Golf. But either way, they might potentially be taking slightly different lines, slightly wonky lines in places. So, yeah, it's not ideal to be battling. You really want to be able to, well, be, be running in that, in that all-important clean air. So, first, change over time. And again, we were having varying strategies from teams for the second second changeover white team happy to continue uh, get using their fastest cars first we were going back to our c-class cars pink team were trying to make up some ground they were opting to run their fastest car their s-class mercedes meaning they'd have to finish with an a-class car I think green team were running in sort of reverse order, starting with their slowest cars, gradually building up through their two B-class cars, and then going on to their to their S-class car to finish it all off. And it, it does, it makes for some very interesting strategies as they uh, cross over the line. Importantly, really, for the pink team in many ways, they have they won the battle of the C-class cars out of that little group. But it's at what cost? At what cost to how much time was lost in that fighting? Green team are now going to be running in clean air. They've got a lot of gap to catch up to orange, and they're not going to be able to do it in the space of a, you know the next couple of laps, or to orange and, and to white. So they're going to be running completely free, because pink have gone for an S-Class car that, as you would expect, will bugger off up the roads, but they will be slower later down the line. Us at the front, well, I mean, we'd hoped to hold on for the lead, you know, as long as, as, long as we could, essentially. Although it's always going to be difficult, our slowest car going up against an A-Class Nissan, you can see the Alpha get a really, really big wobble. Of course, mistakes are a key to, or to avoiding them as much as you can. You don't want to be losing any unnecessary time when you are running around on your own. <laughs> the speed, the closing speed of the Nissan as it tries to chase down that Alfa Romeo. In this particular instance, perhaps fighting the other car is not of a huge amount of use. As you see, our 8C doesn't bother defending. The Nissan clearly much, much faster, and we're on very, very different strategies because, you know, we're still fairly close to them as we come to, to finish. We will have the faster cars at the end. We're not so worried about them at that particular point. A white team would hand over in the lead with us sending out our C-Class, my C-Class car next. Pink, as a bit of a miscommunication and in the spray, uh, Pink would get a slight false start and then stop and wait and just about sort it out. Green team with an interesting shenanigans tactic we haven't actually seen ever used before. There was actually a push start from the 211. The uh, 211 gave the Jaguar a bit of... I don't know if it actually really helped, and it is decidedly dodgy to try it because it'd be very easy to spin a car out. Uh, we, we haven't seen anyone go for the uh, the launch a vehicle forward technique. I mean, I, I approve of the creativity. I'm not sure whether we're going to have to put a rule against it in future. But, I, you know... Well done. Well done for the creativity. At the front of the race, white team were once again leading. However, they were running out of fast cars. They were now on to a B-class car. And while this was technically the fastest car on, or equal fastest car on track at the moment, they were going to be on to a C-class car last. And again, they were going to have that really, really large difference of vehicles. I was sat in second ahead of Pink Team. They were running a C-Class car now as well, and they only had an A-Class car to finish, and we were, at this moment in time, 
considerably better off in terms of the vehicle's performance. The thing that I hadn't clocked and the thing that not many people had really been paying too much attention to was the performance of Green Team because, well, they'd been at the back every lap so far, every changeover, Green Team had been last. However, they were only getting faster. White Team were going to have their slowest car to go. Pink team had an A-class car. While I was ahead and we were going on to an S-class car, it wasn't a full PIS class. Green team had a Lotus 211 that was full PIS class. And yeah, a lot of us had not, you know, it was certainly orange and pink. We were, we were, you know, paying very close attention to each other. Pink really needed to be ahead of me by the time it got to the finish line. And despite me being a little dodgy through the final sector, the Alpha not so great there, we did cross the line ahead of the BMW, importantly, but it was green team catching up. That, uh, yeah, a lot of us had not, uh, not been paying attention to. Now, the Lotus 211 does get handed over to in, in last place. And you can see the gap it's got to try and make up against the Abarth, against the BMW. 211 is mighty fast around these corners. The 211 is very, very quick, even though it's... Well, I mean, it can be a little bit of a fiddly car. It can be a little bit of a dangerous car sometimes with it being slightly snappy, slightly twitchy and so on. But it is immense through the corners. The hope for us was that the straight-line speed of the Abarth would be greater. Maybe even the BMW straight-line speed could cause the Lotus some issues. There is a class difference between them, though, and sure enough, it is not long before that 211 is right on the back of this group. It can just turn so much better. It's a big dive up the inside, perfectly judged from that Lotus gets one car. It's then around the outside of the Abarth and our Fiat is just not, well it is quicker down the straights ever so slightly but it's not enough of a straight down there. The Abarth is stuck trying to go the long way around. The Skyline still leads at the moment but that's not gonna last long. The C-Class Skyline, I think I've actually got a bump from the 211 because the 211 just gets out of that corner so much quicker than the Skyline. Yeah, the poor the poor white team, we're not really gonna stand much of a chance. The Abarth out drags the Anissan as well. The BMW has to sit behind and that does cost the BMW kind of any chance of possibly squeezing past uh, our, our Abarth, although it was always going to be very difficult for an A-class BMW to get past the halfway through S-class Abarth. They did look fairly evenly matched. For Green Team, though, it was an absolutely excellent, excellent strategy. Very, very well played. Kept themselves out of trouble, kept themselves in clean air constantly. Snuck up from kind of nowhere for a lot of the race to take a victory. It would be a second place for us with Orange Team. Third place, that would go the way of the of the pink team, of the BMW, would see off the Nissan. I mean, White, white Team did try a different strategy. Yeah, they did get to running clean air for, for most of it. I, I think perhaps their just sort of more middle-of-the-road strategy with cars just was not quite the way to go. It was just not quite the way to go in all of this. It was a lot of fun. I do very, very much enjoy doing these relay races. They always make for some really interesting tactical battles. As I said, this particular one with, with the PI sets, uh, all of the teams you know, went for fairly even numbers. Even with us splitting the PI up, no one went for really crazy numbers trying to, to balance things. Uh, but even so, we all went for varying different strategies. I do think overall, Orange Team with a first and a second were probably the, the team to beat, certainly. Uh, definitely those higher higher PI cars, you're going to want them on your team. You really did want to have an S-Class car. And the fact that we had, you know, had two S-Class cars and our compromised C-Class car was still not that much slower. The fact that we, yeah, we got a halfway through S-Class vehicle that, you know, very, very quick and our compromised car was still up there with the C-Class car. That is probably what did it. That is that is probably what did it for us, giving us an advantage. Although, of course, the 211, when <laughs> when when given an opportunity, when a 211 is close enough to pounce with all of that grip, it is going to be very, very fast. And, hell, the, the first race, the Indianapolis race, as I said, I, I think the BMW getting caught up in traffic, not being able to make the most of its performance towards the end of the lap, that could have been what swung it, because there was only a tiny, tiny gap. Certainly, this was, it was a lot of fun, and perhaps some of the closest we've seen Varying different strategies, varying cars, but we had two very, very close rounds of racing. Does also mean that uh, Italy is going to win our little Nations Cup relay race, if you like. That, though, is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, a goodbye.